Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Once and again, some people that want to participate in politics, they come to us seeking our help. and That's not bad. Hallelujah. As much as we have feedback from heaven, we help as many as possible. But in my experience along that line, I found out that politicians don't want negative prophecies. They say, you actually did not succeed in this election. So can you divert investment? <laughs> as treacherous as it is to bring a word of God to a politician, the Bible instructs that if you are giving this kind of prophetic utterance, it must be according to the faith that God has provided. It is not to please the person. It is the counsel of God. And the general idea of a prophet is a mouthpiece of God. I was brought to this city before I knew you. I was brought here. It was a politician that invited me. He wanted me to check if the text or the terrain of election will favor his rise. And he put me in one of your hotels. I've forgotten the name of the place. And that night when I stood up and prayed, I saw that he stumbled. He stumbled on a big stone and he did not recover. <laughs> Normally when I go on those trips, I go with my transport money because I've learned <laughs> my experience. <laughs> I have learned. I have learned that when you afflict a politician with a message that seems to be negative to his ambition, he will disconnect from you instantly. So you now take your own transport and you make your way to your destination. So I told him that there's a heavy stone that is coming and he's going to be stumble at that stone in like that. But the stone I was talking about was a relative of his trying to vie for the same post, the same. It was because two of them rose up that they lost favor and two of them were disqualified. And then he called me after he was disqualified and said, it's as if I know that the stone that you're talking about. When I said what I said, I didn't even know what the stone would be. You must understand that because you are a prophet or given a prophetic word doesn't make you God. There are many things about what you are saying that you don't even know the details. So you declare it according to the proportion of faith. If you violate that faith element, you become a liar. And also be truthful to people to tell them, if God has not spoken, tell them, the Lord. Somebody sent me a message, say, somebody is in coma. Can you help us find out the mind of God? Eight hours later, the person said, yeah, any, uh, uh, God, what do you think? Who do you think? Who do you think God is? The so people will put you under pressure to, to lie. The moment you have started lying, you have started losing that gift. Before the Holy Ghost can trust you with a download again, it will take time. He said, ye all may officer. It means that God can drop something on your heart. He can lay something upon your heart. And, 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 and as long as we are alive in the spirit, we are channels of the counsel of God. You cannot serve God if you do not have a gift. God equips you. God empowers you with a gift so that you can have the kind of capacity that is needed for you to bring service in the name of the Lord. So there is no one that is in this place that is without a gift. And part of the areas where equipping is needed is to help each believer to identify his gift. Because this is the body of Christ, the church of Jesus, is that holy nation. That is now a priesthood. Something that he intended to do with Israel that he could not accomplish. He has found the platform to implement it. We are now that nation of priests. And our identity in the kingdom of God is our service to God and our service for God. Some of us are not teaching because we are teachers. 
We are teaching because we have a gift to teach. You can teach because you have researched. You can teach because you have experience. But you will not have as much rank as people that teach because they have a gift to teach. There is no Bible school training, no theological training that you can do that can make you approximate to someone that has a gift to teach. When such a person teaches, his expositions are original. It's as if he was there when the Bible was written. It is because he's piping out from the deposit of spiritual capital, which is in form of what? Gift. You know, I said that you cannot serve God except you have a gift. And so God knows that there's nothing you can do in the flesh that can qualify to be service to his name. So he, he provides the tools by which you can serve him. He provides the tools by which you can represent him. He provides the tools by which you can manifest him. So the Bible is saying that uh, these gifts are as a result of a certain investment. They stem out of an investment and the investment that is captured here is grace. It's always a wonder when we find one brother, one sister, that has sharpened his or her gift, the kind of blessing that flows out of uh, that, the life of that individual. For instance, whenever Theophilus has the microphone, um, he's like Elijah, one that can compare rain, spiritual rain, to come into a place and to come upon the heart of the people. He, 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 his, his ministry is therapeutic. It treats the atmosphere just in case demons are locking. Darkness is locking. He has, he has an analgesic. He has therapeutic capacities to treat the atmosphere. And after a while, only the Holy Ghost can transmit in the environment. It is... Okay, if you, yeah, it's a good place to come. Okay, okay. That is how powerful a gift can be. There is, you see, Theophilus is not doing what he's doing because he's a singer. He's doing it because it's a gift. A lot of people that receive grace like Theophilus, but he sharpened his own. He discovered that what propels it is intercession. So he gives himself to fasting, gives himself to prayer. So that fasting and prayer, which is a discipline that he has now assumed because he has found grace, became the propeller for the grace. He shaped the grace. And so the substance, are you there? The substance of the grace that he carries is actually intercession. So when he begins to sing, he does something like music. But what he's transmitting is the spirit of supplication and intercession. And you see that reaction in the congregation. Some people might sit under his worship for two hours, three hours and never sing. But they cannot stop praying. And they don't know why. They are not prayerful people. They have not prayed for long. They are backslid. But when they come under that grace, the grace seems to have a way of operating them. Because a man found it and he began to tend it. He began to sharpen it. He began to sharpen it. He began to sharpen it. And in the kingdom of God, the secret to greatness is service. So if you know your cutting edge, if you know your endowment, and you sharpen it, it will bring, make you great. You are looking for greatness in, in other ways. <laughs> you will spend a lot of time. But if you sit, if you use the grace you have located as a means for your adventure, you will arrive at the king's palace. The other day, we went for a meeting. God moved in the place. So I was trying to go out, wiggle my play, way out, and I, I was mobbed. Some people wanted to take my body. People wanted to take, wanted to take something. Because they were told, they were taught that if a man of God is coming and you can maybe touch him or you take something from him, whom his body, you have contacted. You see, a lot happened to us when people stop discipleship. A lot happened to us when evangelists became pastors. A lot. And so these guys felt they would tap something, maybe by contact. 
the closest person to me is my wife. She makes contact and for many years she did not tap. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. For many years she didn't tap anything. Then she came to me and said, okay, why is it that I am not growing? You are growing. It's evidence. Then I began to teach her the principles by which grace works. Grace. Having therefore gifts differing according to what? The grace that is given unto. First of all, grace is given. Grace is given. Uh, it's just like uh, the Bible says that uh, no man can receive anything except it be given unto him, not from the pastor, not because I am willing, but it's given from above. So there are principles that you can furnish that will make him that is above to be favorably disposed toward you in allocating to you. There are principles. But the spiritual energy that powers a gift is called grace. There is something that never fails with me if I take the scripture. And I, and I say, okay, let me just study for five minutes. The scripture speaks to me. It's grace. Things that I will see for five minutes, some people may not even see for five years. It's grace. Not because I'm better, but I have grace in that area. And so when you locate the fact that there is grace in a certain area, you need to labor to sharpen it. If I wake up in the morning, I don't study my Bible. What I do is pray. What makes my, the, the gift of teaching, what opens it up is prayer. If I've gone for some time, if I look at one scripture, oh, there's no way you can see it. You can't see it. The gift itself begins to teach. And I can leave the scripture and go to the market. But the gift is still teaching. I'm not reading the Bible, but the gift is talking. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given unto us. Then he mentions the first gift. And it happens to be that this gift, every believer has access to it. Are you here? One gift can set you on a pedestal. If you identify it and you begin to develop it, it can set you on a pedestal. But the point is this, the average believer doesn't know how to take inventory of the divine deposits that he has received. And so he's looking for what is not lost. He's looking for prosperity. Looking for something without. Meanwhile, God always establishes by things that are within. I sat in that my teaching and people from different parts of the world are willing to pay for their fare to come and help me teach because when a gift is developed it's attractive Gentiles they will come into your light but kings will only come into the brightness of your rising it is when your gift begins to shine bright that's when kings will come That's when kings will come. May you not attend to Gentiles all your life. <laughs> May the Lord give you the honor of also tending to, to kings because you, you, that gift is shining within thanks to them. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.